Hello, we're Fred and Winona Davies with The Wholesome Life, and we empower you to rebuild your own wellness and the wellness of your loved ones. And this is part two of Herbal First Aid. We're going to start with broken bones. I don't know if you can see the image on this x-ray, but their wrist is shattered. The, the tips of the wrist um, are both multi-breaks. And simple, you immobilize first, keep it from doing any more damage, and you deal with the pain. But first I wanna ask, what is pain and why pain? Well, pain is the body asking for, sometimes screaming for, more materials to take care of whatever needs are there, repairing the damage in this case. And so if we understand it as asking for materials, we can treat broken bones as a opportunity to listen to the body and find out what materials are needed. The pain of broken bones can be quite severe. That x-ray was actually my own wrist a number of years ago when I broke it quite severely. The pain was bad enough that despite the fact that I knew pain drugs always make me very, very ill, I was to the point that I actually begged for the pain drugs because I didn't know what else to do. Fortunately, the pain drugs didn't, I guess fortunately, the pain drugs didn't work and I had to then start searching for another answer. And so I began looking through our herbal reference books and ran across a note that indicated that Mullen has narcotic strength pain relief properties without any of the side effects. And I quickly made a cup of Mullen tea and to my absolute astonishment, by drinking that tea within about 20 or 30 seconds, the pain started to decrease and actually immediately went away. I like to use pain, some use capsules. I like tea because it absorbs more quickly and relieves the pain very, very quickly. Um, I have a sister who had surgery who was also not able to take pain relievers. She began by taking mullen in smaller doses because despite our assurances that mullen is a plant that's completely safe and that you cannot overdose on, she was really concerned about that. But she very quickly found that by increasing the amount of mullen she was taking to about 10 capsules every hour or two, her pain completely disappeared. Then repairing broken bones. So what else did you do besides mullen to repair the broken bones? So in addition to taking mullen to handle the pain, I also used the complete tissue and bone formula, which is known to help heal bones. It has several herbs in it that are, that are repair materials for the body. Um, so I, I couldn't do a fomentation because my arm was in side of a, uh, a bandaged splint, but I took the capsules and I was taking very large amounts of the capsules, probably 10 to 12 every hour or two. Additionally, I was taking Jurassic Green um, in a drink, which we'll talk about later, but taking Jurassic Green in fairly high quantities also every hour or two hours, which helps keep my body in an alkaline state so that it can repair and heal. I also used herbal calcium because for any tissues in the body, a fairly good amount of calcium is needed to do repairs. And so I was also taking large amounts of the herbal calcium often. And by doing that, I was able to completely avoid surgery and I was able to have no pain and my arm was able to heal quickly, more quickly than the doctors actually expected. And I had a similar result a few years later when I slipped on a wet stair and broke my leg, broke the tibia of my leg and um, used the same process and was able to be back on my feet completely within four weeks. We've had way too much experience with broken bones and the 
bone flashing cartilage formula, which is complete tissue and bone only in the um, bulk format, has comfrey in it. Comfrey is also known as knit bone because it helps to rebuild bone so quickly. So when I broke ribs and multiple other bones, I used the complete tissue and bone with the comfrey in it, uh, or the bone, flesh, and cartilage BF and C formula, and was able to speed the healing along very, very quickly. Kava kava is also a well-known plant for pain, uh, also for a muscle relaxant. And I used that to keep the muscles from spasming so that the um, broken ribs wouldn't be pulled out of place while they were trying to heal. And Winona's already mentioned getting enough. 10 capsules is not too much. Uh, use your muscle testing for how much to take, but get sufficient so that it's no pain and so that your body is rebuilding. And it's probably worth checking every hour if you need more materials with significant breaks like broken bones. Right. And remember, as we mentioned in the last video, these are all safe plants. You cannot overdose on these plants. They have no side effects and no effects that will cause you harm. So you can take as much as you'd like until you get the results you are looking for. And using muscle testing, it's especially completely safe to take as much as you need. Well, one of the things that can be life-threatening are burns. And I'd like to first talk briefly about sunburns, but then about some life-threatening burns that are more serious than that. Um, pretty much all of us have had sunburns of some kind or another. And the complete tissue and bone ointment or massage oil actually works very well on sunburn. And, but for large or serious burns, Dr. Christopher had a formula with comfrey powder, lobelia powder, honey, and wheat germ oil in it. And that is very effective on burns. I have used it myself specifically, and it really does work at pulling the heat out, helping the tissue to heal again. Uh, and that can be true even on larger burns across a bigger portion of the body. Uh, the aseptic tincture that's listed there is to kill infection. Uh, we have a story though. Winona, would you tell the story of the two boys? Dr. Christopher tells the story of uh, two young boys who were playing with matches and gasoline. Um, this was back in the 1940s, I believe, or 50s. Um, and they were playing with matches and gasoline. And if you can guess what the result was, of course, there was a, a, an explosion, a fire. Both of these boys had their hands severely burned to the point where, of course, they were in the hospital. Um, the medical personnel at the hospital told the parents that it would require surgeries and years of um, rehabilitation and that they didn't know what the outcome would be. Um, one set of parents stayed at the hospital and helped and, and worked with the medical professionals to, to try to heal their son's hands. The other family was not pleased with what the doctors said, and so they took their son to Dr. Christopher. Uh, the outcome was that, and Dr. Christopher had the family that came to him put the um, comfrey powder, lobelia powder, and honey and wheat germ oil on their child's hands um, and just plaster his hands with that loosely covered with gauze and then every few hours take the gauze off and reapply the, uh, the, the ointment that was created with that powder. Um, the end result was the boy who stayed with the medical community predictably, and I have seen this happen in, in my own family uh, case, um, doctors even today don't have a lot of things that can prevent scarring and tissue, severe tissue damage with burns. So the boy that stayed with the medical prof professionals ended up with scarred hands that were really almost non-functional 
he could not um, bend and straighten his fingers because the skin had scarred so badly and, and his hands were almost like claws. On the other hand, the boy who uh, his parents took him to Dr. Christopher and they used the formula described, his hands actually healed completely with no scarring and no problems and he had 100% complete recovery and complete um, clean tissue on his hands with no, uh, no problems long term. Yesterday we were visiting family and one of the family members had burned their hand in the oven um, and was putting aloe vera on it. Uh, I, aloe vera was working, it was keeping it from uh, feeling real hot and, and burning. And I suggested that they might try the complete tissue and bone ointment on the burn to actually facilitate the healing. So in the first few minutes of putting the complete tissue and bone ointment on the burn, she said, it, I can feel my heartbeat in the burn area. And it actually feels kind of painful. And I said, okay, that means it's healing. And within like five minutes, it uh, quit being painful and alternately could feel the heartbeat in it, but it means that the healing process is going on. For mild burns, again, lavender essential oil is fine, but it needs to be put in a carrier oil like olive oil to dilute it, maybe one to 10 or one to 20, um, one drop of lavender to uh, 10 or 20 drops of olive oil so that it's not too strong. Let's talk briefly about poisoning and how to help the body in poisoning situations. So with internal poisoning, uh, you're going to need to know whether it's chemical or not. And yeah. what do we do? And not even just if it's chemical or not, you're going to need to know what kind of chemical because some chemicals can cause severe damage. Things like lye or acids, if you um, vomit them back, they're gonna cause damage coming back out as much as going down in. And so it's really important to have an idea of what it is that has been um, taken in and immediately call poison control and they can advise you as to whether to have the person vomit or not. Um, and it's really important to that, know that because you do not want to have someone vomiting something back out that's going to destroy tissue and cause scarring and damage to the esophagus. If it's something that does need to be vomited back out, a really wonderful plant to have on hand, and I keep this uh, on hand rather than Ipecac, because it's much safer and much more reliable, and that is lobelia. We have talked about using lobelia for other things. Um, it's a wonderful guide herb for plants or for you know, any herbal formulas that we wanna take, but taken in large quantities, it actually will induce vomiting. And when I say large quantities, I am talking- A mm, couple of- uh, dropper fulls. Yeah, two to three dropper fulls in a glass of water uh, will induce vomiting if it doesn't increase it a little bit. But lobelia will not harm you. If you get too much of it, it will simply induce vomiting. And that's why I keep it on hand rather than Ipecac. So for small amounts like food poisoning or something like that, lobelia Lobelia tincture can be taken in small amounts, say 10 drops or uh, every half hour, something in about a half a dropper full every half hour. And it actually will counteract the poisoning. I'll mention that again in the next section because I've used Lobelia to counteract other kinds of poison of bug bites and bee stings. Uh, this summer has been especially one with a lot of bee stings. I'm beginning to learn how to take care of bees, and unfortunately, uh, that beginning is learning that the bee suit didn't have all of its holes repaired, 
And so I got actually nine stings one time when I was checking the hive. And Dr. Christopher's sting and bite or plantain ointment pulls the sting back out of it again, pulls the poison back out. And then using the lobelia tincture to counteract the poison was the other piece that really, really made a big difference. Uh, you'll see the plants here, the narrow one and the broad one, they're both plantain. Uh, they grow in different areas of the country. We have the narrow leaf one growing in our yard and I have a teenage girl that's a neighbor who got stung with a bee and uh, I handed her one of the leaves of our plant, told her to chew it up and then put it on the bite so it could pull the poison back out again. And she did. And I asked her a couple of days later how it went. She said she couldn't pull the bite anymore. It had completely cleared. So the sting and bite ointment works very well to pull the poison out. And it also works for blood poisoning. For poison oak, poison sumac, poison ivy, uh, a different formula is the right poison formula though. And that is the rash formula with comfrey marshmallow and marigold on it. I'll tell a story briefly about when I served a scoutmaster and one of my youngest scouts in his short shorts walked through some poison oak and was just red all the way on his white legs. I mean, they were, they were completely coated with uh, rash. The rash formula, uh, after we washed all of the oils off with soap and cool water, we just spread the rash formula on as thick as we could get it. And within a few hours, he was fine. It had helped the poison uh, calm down the skin and, and actually made a difference there. Black ointment also will work for that. For head injuries and concussions, these can be very serious and scary. It's really important. If you know that someone has had a head injury, try to not move them unless they're in a life and death situation. Immobilize them whenever possible using splints or something to um, put around their head and neck so that they cannot move their head and neck or turn them or make it worse. Um, it's really call 911. Yes, call 911 if someone has had um, a head injury, and and you want to make sure that you're you're going to stay safe. Cayenne is an excellent herb to use to make sure there's no internal bleeding, including to the brain, or to stop any internal bleeding, mm -hmm. including to the brain. If the person is conscious, you can administer it as we've described in the last video. If they are unconscious, one thing you can do is put a few drops of cayenne tincture under the tongue. That does not put them in a situation where they have to swallow, but it does allow the cayenne to be absorbed in the mouth mm -hmm. and to begin its work to stop bleeding. And maybe to bring them back to consciousness uh, with a very hot mouth, who knows. Rebuilding the brain and the nerves and the spine uh, is actually done with Dr. Christopher's formulas quite effectively. You can muscle test for relaxes, for mind track, for cayenne uh, to increase the blood flow, for a formula that helps the brain recover also in addition to mind track is memory plus formula. And of course the complete tissue and bone formula to rebuild any damaged bone or tissue. Calcium is always needed. And the Jurassic Green formula is, is also needed to help rebuild. The, yes, the calcium formula is especially important for any nerve damage or brain damage. The um, external sheath, I guess, if you want to call it that, for neurons in the brain and for nerves throughout our body is largely composed of calcium. And so offering calcium and increasing calcium is one of the most important things we can do to help rebuild nerves and brain tissue. Absolutely.
what do we do for appendicitis? Um, first, the appendix is uh, low in the stomach area on the right side. Um, and it's right at the beginning of the ascending colon, right at the very beginning of the lower bowel or, or what we call the colon. And it is part of the lymphatic system and it's actually caused, appendicitis is caused by too much toxins in the body. Just the body's overcome with trash. And so the lymphatic system is swelling up. So the first thing we do is stop eating, stop bringing in more toxins and administer raspberry leaf tea, um, as many cups as they can drink in a day until the irritation of the appendicitis stops. A catnip tea enema can help, and lobelia tincture, as we've mentioned for poisoning, also can help. So those are the things to test for, for uh, with muscle testing. Lots of raspberry tea and lobelia tincture. For diarrhea, if you have a child who is having diarrhea or an adult, um, and you need to get it stopped to prevent um, dehydration or problems, there are a number of things you can do to help with that. Slippery elm powder is one of the first things that can help. It does a couple of things. One, it's nutritive and is prebiotic. It's also soothing and calming to the tissue. It also, however, has the, um, uh, the soluble fibers that will um, help absorb excess liquid and kind of help slow things down with the diarrhea. And it's found in Dr. Christopher's Soothing Digestion Formula, or you can find it as its own um, and use that in cases of diarrhea to try to, well, to actually get it stopped. Another thing that will work and will help is similar in its action, and that is psyllium husk. If you have that on hand, that is um, a seed husk that is found in a popular uh, formula called Metamucil. It has two actions. It absorbs liquid, so if you're constipated, it absorbs more liquid into the bowel so that the bowel can soften the um, fecal matter and get, get it moving out. Or if you have diarrhea, it absorbs the excess liquid and helps bulk things up so that it's no longer um, causing the diarrhea or having diarrhea. Um, lower bowel formula is another herbal formula that can help with diarrhea. I would take lower bowel formula in conjunction with either slippery elm or psyllium husk. Um, lower bowel is healing to the intestine and helps it to balance. It's usually actually known for constipation. But it actually is a balancer. Mm -hmm. Yarrow or catnip tea can be very soothing as well, especially in cases where there is cramping and pain. Um, those are helpful with that and to help prevent any um, kinds of after effects from the diarrhea and, and gas and problems. And then another very important thing with diarrhea is to keep hydrated and keep the electrolytes balanced. Um, one author has stated that had the um, pioneers who died in, and, and people 150, 200 years ago who died in large numbers from diseases like cholera, if they had known to be able to keep those electrolytes balanced, that the body could have healed and they would not have died from those diseases um, and so that's a really important thing to know. My favorite is a recipe I developed myself. It prevents dehydration, but especially in cases where um, dehydration may be an issue such as diarrhea or um, that kind of thing. Uh, swamp water is very effective. We also use it in cases where there's you know, a lot of heat and you want to keep hydrated. It's a very simple formula, one heaping teaspoon of the Jurassic green powder in a quart of water with about two tablespoons of lemon juice or the juice of half a lemon and a half teaspoon of real salt 
which you do not want to use refined salt in it, it, this. It absolutely must be one of the whole salts. You could use a Celtic sea salt or a Himalayan salt, but it must be a whole salt and not a, a white refined salt um, because those minerals are part of those electrolytes that need to get balanced. Um, and you just mix those together and drink that as needed um, to help keep those electrolytes balanced and keep yourself from dehydrating. I love swamp water when I'm out working in the sun all day. It makes such a difference. I can drink a gallon of swamp water and just keep working and keep working and keep working. Uh, and I've had teenagers working with me that have just pretty much expired. I'll give them a five minute break. We'll drink um, a couple glasses of swamp water and then we continue working and it really does make a difference. So what do we do for fevers? The typical advice for a fever is block the fever, bring it back down again. And actually the way the body works, we should support the fever instead of blocking it. And to support that fever, you have lots of extra liquids, water with echinacea tincture in it, um, multiple times a day, every couple hours, muscle test for yarrow tincture, uh, 10 to 15 drops, multiple times a day, lobelia tincture. Uh, if that fever is bad and they need to vomit, as we mentioned, one to three teaspoons to create a vomiting or uh, just a little bit if they need just enough to, to break the fever or to, to help them fight a infection. Uh, and we'll talk more about infection in just a moment here. Elderflower or peppermint tea is wonderful. Keep them moist. Moist heat like a ginger bath uh, will help to support that fever and help pull out toxins. The lower bowel formula, slippery elm, to calm down the gut if, there, if that's the issue of the fever. I love when we have muscle testing so we can actually test to see what the body needs to help that fever and, and not to block it or to take it away. Uh, what do we do for infection? So one of the reasons this follows on fever is that often uh, fever is the result of an infection. Fever is one way our body is trying to destroy pathogens in our body. So this kind of infection, however, that we're talking about is generally um, an external infection. If you have a cut that becomes infected or a wound of some kind that becomes infected from, from whatever reason, some of the ways that you can help with that. We've already mentioned plantain in connection with the poisons associated with bee stings, but plantain does pull poison and it doesn't matter what kind of poison. So if you have an external wound with an infection, plantain will actually help start pulling that poison out of the wound and you can apply it, um, as mentioned, crush it, uh, bruise it really well and put it on the infected area. Or use it in the plantain ointment and that works also. Um, yarrow, again, is mentioned there. Ginger is extremely strong antibiotic and so is garlic. And so those can be used internally or externally. Externally for garlic, remember to put uh, an oil on the skin. You may have heard of garlic on the soles of the feet and, and then just put a sock on to keep it on there overnight and it'll clear a fever overnight. Well, make sure you put some oil or something on that skin so that it doesn't burn the skin. And then for garlic, when I have a beginning of a flu or even the tickle of a throat or anything that's uh, just starting into a fever, I love garlic because you can take a clove or two of garlic, throw it in a blender, blend it up good, and then... With some water. Oh yes, I do need water in there. <laughs> uh, about a cup of water, not too much, because you're going to drink this down and it you might not want 
two or three cups of water in your stomach with garlic in it. Anyway, I'll blend it up till it's completely liquid and then take a mouthful and hold that mouthful in the mouth and just swish it around and it will kill all of the um, bacteria or virus that's in the mouth, the sinuses, the nose, the throat. Swallow it down after a while, take another one and do the same thing. And interestingly, garlic is usually very um, smelly, but when the body needs all of it and uses all of it, it doesn't smell at all. So I use garlic that way. And the same with ginger tea. I use ginger tea as great off a quarter uh, inch of ginger, pour hot water over it, and then drink it as a tea, and that'll help a lot with infections also. Oh, we definitely once in a while have heat stroke threats. So what does that look like? So if you um, are outdoors in the heat and not getting enough hydration particularly, um, you can be uh, susceptible to heat stroke and especially in a desert climate where we're so hot and it's so dry. Um, you might notice someone who's developing heat stroke would have hot red skin but dry. They're not sweating. They don't look sweaty. They look dry. Um, they're going to have a throbbing headache because of that dehydration. Dehydration is one of the causes of severe headaches. They may have some nausea or even some vomiting. Their pulse is going to be very quick and um, very strong. You'll be able to feel it just touching their wrist. It'll be a very uh, strong pulse as the heart pounds hard to try to get that thicker blood that does not have enough water in it through the veins. Um, they may even lose consciousness. So what do you do? Uh, cool them off as quickly as you can. Move them to some shade, uh, sponge some water on them so that they're actually cooling off with water. Since they're not able to sweat, you've got to uh, help them get water over them so that any air going past them will cool them off. Uh, if you are someplace where there's enough water, turn on a hose, put them in cool um, like a, a stream or a swimming pool or a shower and cool them off, immerse them in water. If they are conscious, of course, you want to have them start rehydrating. Sip water, don't gulp it. And here's another place where uh, real salt, the multi-minerals there, or the Jurassic Green and lemon juice and the swamp water formula would make a huge difference. So that they're rehydrating quickly and uh, they'll recover pretty quickly if you get a chance to just let them recover by cooling them. Hypothermia. Hmm. What can we do about hypothermia? Here's cayenne again. Isn't that strange how often we show cayenne? Uh, cayenne under the tongue will help to warm the whole body. Or a glass of water with cayenne pepper powder in it will help to warm the whole body. Um, cayenne in the shoes, actually. Uh, cayenne powder inside the shoes. But not inside the sock. Not inside the sock. Although it wouldn't hurt, it's just going to feel kind of gritty. And it's going to be painful. I've done it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but do warm them and get them to a shelter. Uh, if they have gotten quite cold like they do with hypothermia, it's probably going to take two bodies against them to uh, warm them up. And skin against skin is absolutely critical to get them warmed up. So use body heat. A warm drink will help them as long as they're mentally present enough to, to drink it down warm. Not too hot, we don't want to burn their throat. Uh, the other thing we don't want to do is we don't want to rub their skin. I know that's been said in some places, rub their skin, get the blood moving. No, if they're that cold, uh, you might actually cause tissue damage if you rub the skin. 
missed anything on hypothermia? I don't think so. Well, we've only covered a few of the things in herbal first aid, and the references you saw were from Herbs to the Rescue. There's another wonderful book that we have called Herbal First Aid and Healthcare. And I would suggest you get both these books and read them because both of them have some wonderful suggestions. You're going to use some of the things over the years in them. We love carrying it with our herbal first aid kit, um, having the book with, because once in a while you'll go, oh, I know I've read that, but I need to look it up. And then you've got the herbs with you and you've got the book with you and you can take care of just about anything that you need to take care of to help yourself or your family or those that are with you to preserve their life and to stay healthy and well.